I'm Mike Bell. I'm the project coordinator for the Chatham Island Taiko Trust and I've been leading the Albatross Translocation Project with a good crew of helpers. Um, so this is our, our, our fifth transfer and our, our final transfer. Um, so yeah, we've been going for five years. A joint project between the landowners, Bruce and Liz Tanui, and the Taiko Trust. So this project's a little bit different to other seabird conservation projects. It, it, it's not a restoration project. There's, there's no evidence to show that Chatham Island Albatross were, were ever anywhere else other than the pyramid. So we are trying to create something new, and the reason we're trying to do that is that the, the threats for, for Chatham Albatross are many and one of the most significant for them is going to be the impacts of global climate change. The predictions for global climate change in the Chathams are more severe weather events. So a little bit like the drought we've had for the last five months, um, but, but for the Albatross Islands specifically it, it's severe storms. They strip the island of, of vegetation and of soil and therefore the Albatross have suppressed breeding for often up to 10 to 15 years afterwards because there's no soil or vegetation to make their nest with. So to future-proof the population, we want to get them onto an island like this where there's much deeper soil and they'll be more able to withstand those severe weather events and not be affected so much. So we're looking at threats that these birds are going to be facing actually 50 to 100 years time and, and, and trying to future-proof them. So all of these guys uh, should fledge in the middle two weeks of April. Yeah, and because we've sort of left the very old chicks behind and the very young chicks behind, we've kind of got Joe average chick, so they'll they'll fledge within about a two week period of each other. So that's part of our selection criteria. So yeah. So every 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 morning we prepare the fish and, and squid and, and, and so we, 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 we weigh every bit and, and cut it into the, the sizes we want so that, that depends on what time, what stage the chicks are through um, when they first arrive we're only giving them small amounts of food to get them adjusted to, a, to, to the new diet that they're on and then after 10 days to 2 weeks when they've adjusted to it we start cranking it up a bit more to put a lot of weight and condition on them and then towards the end they actually start taking less food again. Um, but then every, every day we have to warm the fish up. Um, so our best way of killing these birds would actually be to, to, to give them cold water and cold food. Um, they basically spend all their energy trying to warm that food up in their belly instead. So, um, so the fish we warm to 25 degrees and the water we give them we warm to 37. The reason we only bring the fish up to 25 rather than to 37 is we'd end up cooking the fish and squid if we were to bring it too much, too, too, too hot. Um, so we're sort of trying to balance that by warming it up enough um, and not having it too cold but then also not cooking it because otherwise, otherwise we're losing some of the nutrients out of that fish by, by doing that. Um, so yeah, we, we do that process down at the colony and we, we warm up enough food to to feed eight birds at, at a time uh, and then go in amongst the birds and, and feed eight. Meanwhile somebody's back warming the next batch of food up to the right temperature and we do a cycle through like that. At the same time as we give them the fish we're also giving them 10% of their body weight in water um, and that water's got 5% seawater in it um, and that kicks in their salt gland and gets them ready for heading out to sea where they're um, you know, they'll be extracting all the water they need from the sea and the food that they eat. So. We feed them every day. What the parents feed them is very rich. It's partly digested and we can't match that. There's no food that we could make that's that good. So what we do instead is make that up in volume. So we, therefore we feed them every day as their, their parents were only feeding them every four or five days. So over a week, 
they're getting the same number of calories that ours is just delivered every day to them. So we give them a mixture of squid and fish each day uh, and then we usually use two different types of fish, pilchards and mackerel, to make sure we're sort of getting a, a, a mixed diet in them so that they, basically we're trying to get them as, as fat as possible um, so that when they leave here they're basically as fat as they can be to fly um, and towards the end you know, we're tailoring what they get to, to each individual bird's needs depending on the, the size of bird that is because with seabirds the fatter they are the higher their chances of survival because they, when they go out to sea they have to learn how to forage by themselves e even a naturally fledged chick has no more interaction with its parents once it fledges so they've got to learn how to feed as soon as they hit the water so big fat chicks have more reserve to tide them over in that first few weeks while they learn to forage for themselves so hence why we're aiming to get big fat chicks this is the this is the best project I've, I've worked on my whole life yeah, it's amazing so it's a whole you know the whole thing that we're trying to do here is pretty pretty special um, and then it could also lead to a whole lot of other things as, as well so so many, yeah it's probably definitely the, the best project I've ever worked on and there's other albatross species that need similar help and you know this may spur people on to do things with them as well so it's you know yeah or other people on this island or elsewhere to, to do other as ambitious conservation projects it's quite you know it's pretty yeah kind of cool so it's quite an ambitious project and quite a long-term project you've got to have a sort of far-reaching vision to to, to see it mm. Every day we get a step closer, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs>